you're going to learn Matariki, take us on that journey. And with everybody that we've seen that has been up here that's taken the challenge, we've learned something new. Something really new. So that my one, of course, was about the, the cornucopia, the veritable panoply of berries that they have in the forest. That was very awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But today we're here with uh, Iwe Tani, <coughs> and also remember those with our, with our Pathfinder. Uh, all the references to Matariki that can be found in here are here on our Pathfinder. Uh, I, I won't talk about Iwe Tirangi, uh, or I won't talk about the seven or the nine, I'll leave that to our tangata who is here today. He is from the Ohu Rautaki, from the strategy uh, 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 Rōpū, and uh, he is here to talk about Iwe Tirangi. He's quite a, a, a quiet man, he doesn't say much, and his name is Rob. Griffith, no one did a great job. Um, Kia ora tātou. Um, um, ko aroa te I tipu aki o ki ta whanganui atara, kei rupotorua aho i noho ana i nai nei. Oh. I mihi ana ki na mana whenua, no re rā, tēnā koto yeah. katoa. Uh, I mahi ana o ki kaitohu whakahono ki Te kumihira o nā rotoroa, roto o rotoroa, ko Rob Griffiths a hau. Oh. Hey, um, thank you very much to my esteemed colleagues, and um, I'd like, really like to acknowledge my other students of uh, Matariki for coming along today to support me on my kōrero on uh, Hiwa Itarangi. It's uh, really appreciate the time to call, so thank you. Hey, um, I was asked to do a little bit of research on Matariki and in particular Hiwa Itarangi, which is known sometimes as the wishing star, or as he so kindly put, the Lofo star. <laughs> is, um, uh, and in my quarter, I'll, I'll try to take you on a little bit of the journey on to what I learned and also, I guess, what it means to me. Um, first thing I've learned is uh, more widely, Matariki is a real time of remembrance. It's paying respect for those that have passed. And it's a time of new beginnings or to plan or to, I guess, aspire for the year ahead. But probably the one thing I've really learned is a lot of it seems to revolve around kai. <laughs> and a lot of food stuff, hence the countdown assimilations. Um, and the stars indicate the success of the season ahead. And uh, I guess traditionally, from what I took away from it is if one star is brighter than another, there'll be yummy kai in that source it represents, or if there's more dim or it's completely missing, then um, <coughs> that kai source for the year, there won't be so much of it about. So that could be a little bit of concern potentially. Something I learned pretty quickly is um, how many stars are a part of Matariki, and Matariki has long been thought of a seven star cluster. And uh, this is also uh, in Aboriginal culture. I understand they talk about the seven sisters, and in Japan, it's also known as Subaru. But they've only got six stars on the car if you go and check out your legacy that's parked outside. Um, but I guess the interesting thing is that you'll notice that my star's not up there, which is Hiwa Itarangi. So that lot of time had me wishing that there was more information on Hiwa Itarangi. So, yeah, um, you might find that I've so, only got a little bit of stuff to share on it, the particulars of the star. Hey, um, this is actually, I think it's really cool that the, the star cluster itself is one of the closest star clusters to planet Earth or the Sun, which I think is really neat. That not only does it have a real, I guess, connection culturally, but also that 
it's actually kind of really close to us, so that's kind of neat, I thought. And um, while there's seven or nine stars that we acknowledge as being part of Matariki, there's actually over a thousand stars in there. I think it's something like 430 light years away, which if you were to take the Millennium Falcon, that's still a long time in space. So um, hang in there if you ever want to get to it. But I guess more importantly, um, in Matauranga, the seven stars have a real connection to the physical world, and that's the seven stars that you see in front of you there. But in more recent years, there's this amazing guy, Dr. Rangi Matunua, who's carried on a lot of previous work from his whānau, and they've now come... We've now rediscovered or brought back the forgotten two stars, which are also known as Pohutukawa and Hiwa Itarangi, which you can see Pohutukawa in the middle of the screen at the bottom and Hiwa Itarangi. Um, yeah, so again, the irony of wishing that there was more information on my star. Um, okay. Um, the really cool thing I discovered is that the, the other seven stars, a lot of them are about food and kai. You know, we've got plants that grow below the ground, plants that grow above the ground in the trees, the water, the winds, and etc. But I guess the, the real cool thing for me about Hiwa Itarangi and Pohutukawa is that their connection's really in the spiritual world. One's about the dreams or aspirations of what's mm. to come, mm. and Pūtukawa is about remembering those that have passed, which made me feel kind of pretty, a little bit special, because I'm not necessarily the most spiritual guy in the world, but Kingy decided that I'd be the right person for the job. <laughs> Maybe he felt like I needed some learning. Anyway, um, this, I discovered, was my favourite image I found of Matariki, of the constellation, I guess, not being the most spiritual guy, but when the stars were more personified, is um, the character of the stars sort of started to come to life in terms of, hey, the, the twin nature of the food below the ground and the food above the ground, the connection of the food and the water and to the mother. So I really enjoyed that about the... Um, the the, this image in particular, and um, my star, which just, this is probably why it's chosen as well, because it's the youngest of all the stars, is Pohutukawa, uh, is Hiwa Itarangi, which is just on the left-hand side in the middle there. The, um, yeah, it's pretty stunning, so I was quite happy with that. Um, hey, here's some things I learned about the tikanga of my stars, and, which I'd like to share you, which is really the rules or the way of interacting with Hiwa Itarangi, kind of the rules of engagement. Is, um, a number of these are really familiar to us in terms of the concept of wishing is somewhat universal, you know, and um, we've all grown up in that struggle. Oh, when you cut the cake, you can make a wish, but don't tell anyone, because it won't come true. When you drop a coin in the well, or at Hamarana Springs, mm. and don't tell anyone because your wish won't come true. And that's very similar for the practice around Hiwa Itarangi. When we make our wish to Hiwa, the star, it's a connection between us and our wish, and we're trying to send our wish towards Hiwa Itarangi. And that's really important. Don't tell anyone, though, it won't come true. <laughs> so just got to keep it to yourself. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I guess that, and this is, the thing I really like about that is it's really different from what some of popular culture might try to um, impart on us. Hey, when it comes to goal setting and your dreams, you know, you can watch a, there's a Tony Robbins video and you can go, <laughs> oh man, you've just got to, you've got to really act to actualize your dreams. You've got to tell everyone, make yourself accountable to your goals. You have to write it on the fridge, be reminded of that goal every day. It's like, nah, now this is different. It's a spiritual connection. It's you sending your dream or your wishes to someone else in the hope that, hey, they will come true. So I thought it was pretty neat, probably different from the infomercials that I watch on TV. 
Hey, another really cool thing about tikanga that I learned when it comes around hiwa itarangi is traditionally my understanding of the practice would be hey when hiwa was shining really bright in the start stuff sky was hey the doctor's in the house he's here to help you <laughs> time is right now is the time to go and find that person that can support you on your journey so you traditionally go and find that tuhonga in the or that priest, that spiritual priest, to help you with your with your journey of sending your wishes and dreams. And you would go to the garden, the Ramadakai, could have been because it was somewhere that was quite fertile, and dig a little hole, barefooted, and then bury your feet. And then the Tuwanga would say a karakia to support your dreams on reaching Hiwatia, Hiwa Itirangi. And then you would try to send your wishes to the star as well. I thought that was kind of cool, that kind of mm. connection with Papa Tuanuku, where you're trying to reach for the stars in Ranganui. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. Um, little side point is uh, in some of my research, which didn't actually kind of end up going anywhere, but there is a really strong movement for barefoot gardening on the internet. So, yeah. If that's something you're into, I'm not sure that it has any relevance to Matariki. But, and there's also a naked, world naked gardening day as well. But you might be wishing I hadn't mentioned that right now. Cool. Hey, um, how does this relate to me? Or I guess maybe part of the reason I was chosen for this V2 is I've always been a bit of a believer of the term dream big and go and chase them. Yeah, yeah so... Earlier this year, well, we actually started thinking about it, probably over a year and a half ago, we, um, a group of us from Rotary Lakes Council got a wee bit of a team together to enter an event, which mm. arguably is sometimes probably called the longest and toughest race in New Zealand. Mm. And um, it's called the God's Own Adventure Race. And um, it, we need to do a bit of serious bit of wishing and um, sort of thinking pretty hard about ourselves and what what it would take to you know reach our dream of trying to not only compete in this race but complete it and it has a reputation for anywhere from only 30 to 60 percent of the field actually finishing and that, and that race is called the God's Own Adventure Race and uh, it's held every year in New Zealand um, there's a myriad of things that you have to try and do even just to get to the start line, let alone the finish line. But for us, I guess our dream or our goal was pretty simple, which was just relentless forward motion <laughs> to try and get from the start line to the finish. Is um, You're basically just trying to keep moving forward at all times, unless you were sleeping. <laughs> or you had to look after each other, like your lives depended on it. Crazy. And... Don't get lost, or you, if you do, find yourself really quickly, and don't screw up, or if you screw up, recover really quickly. <laughs> okay, it was an amazing journey, um, 660 kilometres wow. across the wider Rotorua area, and Bay of Plenty involved a whole bunch of biking, walking, hiking, this other weird activity called pack rafting, and... Um, that was our journey. I guess more importantly for us, we did complete it and realised our dream and uh, came away uninjured and in good spirits. And awesome. I guess ultimately what we wished for is that we dreamed big and our wish came true, which was pretty mm. neat. Mm. And I guess, I don't know if, like I said, I'm not necessarily a spiritual guy, but sometimes you've got to put it out there to be able to, for some of those things to ever come true. Mm. Cool, just a few images there of our wee event. And that is my discussion on Hiwa Itarangi. I just really like to acknowledge some people. Um, this, every, probably everyone in the audience knows about this guy, Rangi Matamua, but I guess he's like the Renaissance, the leader of the Renaissance of Matariki. And um, I, I don't know if this is necessarily about wishing or dreaming big, but heck. If anyone sort of says, oh, you know, one person can't change the world. Yeah, no, That's but true, eh? he's done a massive amount for the 
Makariki and Long Hobu can have a public holiday. Mm. No, that's not bad. We celebrate some pretty corny stuff in New Zealand, <laughs> like Halloween and Guy Fawkes, <laughs> you know? So this guy's really worthy. Hey, Kenny, Kenny Battle, he's just here. Yeah. Hey, thanks for the um, widow of coming today. Rangatihi is probably a great source of information and Makarana Māori, and he's available right here at the library. Call him 0800. <laughs> uh, Joanne, thank you for organising everything and Google. It's actually really average for finding out information when you start, but that's okay. We've got amazing resources locally and some awesome people. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. awesome. Another pucky pucky, I think. So uh, that was really, that was really insightful. That was really awesome. He went to Rangi. So tonight, you want to wish, get those lotto numbers. <laughs> Take that hole in the garden. Put it. Take your shoes off. <laughs> Put the bit of the trees and then get, get some tohunga koko rangi to get. And then let me be that tohunga koko rangi because if you get the lotto numbers, then you can give them to me. Uh, th thank you very much, Ewa. And it's lovely how you brought uh, Hiwai Te Rangi to life. Mm. Uh, uh, because really, you did get, get one of the hardest jobs because there's so much information on Tukuanuku Tukuarangi, but only with the, with the uh, nine stars of Matariki coming out two years ago, we've only just got that limited amount, but you really brought it together and made it made it shine. So, no reta tenakwe, tenakwe, tenakwe. Uh, Otera Tato, don't forget we have our Pathfinder here. And uh, may our path find us here again tomorrow mm. at 12.15. will be the last day of Matariki. And so the last day of Matariki Tawira, where our Mayor uh, Steve Chad Chadwick will be talking about Otukawa. But today is about Hiwa Itarangi and, and yourself there. Uh, Rob, Morena, Tenakoto, Tenakoto, Mati Paki Paki. Thank you.